everybody, I'm Sean and welcome. It's lovely to be with you and we look forward to worshipping Jesus with you. So if you have celebrated a birthday this week, we want to say an extra special happy birthday to you. May God bless you and may you continue to live for Jesus Christ. Before we do worship, let's pray. Thank you Lord for this wonderful day. Thank you that we can worship you and we'll have fun. Amen. Amen. Let's sing to Jesus.
by your grace there was nothing that we could do We're changed by your blood, you're making all things new With your spirit in us, we're sealed for a life with you
Wasn't it awesome to sing to Jesus Christ and to dance and have fun while we do it? He is awesome and He deserves all of our lives in worship and in praise to Him. And so today's story, what we're going to be looking at is God loves a cheerful giver. That means somebody who gives with joy and happiness in their hearts. And so as we do this, I'm going to ask Sky some questions. Okay, and I hope that you will also pay attention to these questions so you can see and answer to your parents as well. So Sky, um, do you get tuck money at school? Yes. And on what day do you get it? On a Friday. Okay, and what do you do with the tuck money? I buy lunch and buy sweets. Okay, and do you give some of that money or some of the things that you buy to anybody sometimes? I sometimes give to my friend. Okay, and do you like doing that? <laughs> Not always. Not always, okay, that's fine. <laughs> and then I also want to ask you, for your birthday, do you get given gifts? Yes. And who gives you gifts normally? Mom and Dad. Oh, do you wake up in the morning and do you find something like this sometimes? Yes. Okay. And what do you like for gifts? Do you want me to see inside here? Hey? What is in there? Do you like getting these gifts? Yes. Like, what is this called? A puppet. A puppet. That's a cool gift. And maybe sometimes... Wow. Like a watch, hey? And other nice stuff that you like as gifts. And today's story, we're also going to learn about... Someone who is the greatest gift, the indescribable gift that was given to us. That shows how awesome and generous God was to us. But what I want to ask you also is, when you get the gifts, do you get other types of gifts also? Yes. What do you get? Money. Money! Who gives you money? A lot of people. A lot of people. Okay. And then what do you do with that money? Buy clothes and toys. And toys. Do you give some of that money away? Not always. Not always. Like sometimes do you think maybe on a Sunday I can give what I'm there at uh, North Point Kids and maybe that can be given to the people that need it? <laughs> no. Not always. Well, okay, that's fine. But today we're going to learn about why God wants us to be people that are generous and give of what he has blessed us with. So today I want you um, to pay attention to the story as we look at it. Before we do that, we're going to ask Kai to read for us from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. So Sky, can you read for us, please? And if you um, don't have your Bibles, please push pause, go and grab your Bibles quickly, and then we can read together before we go into the story. Let's read together. Each one of us, each one of us must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful gift. Let's listen to the story together. Paul, a missionary and teacher in the early church, was collecting money for the believers in Jerusalem. They needed help. Paul wrote a letter to his dear friends in the church at Corinth to ask for help. He told them about the ways he had seen God's grace in the churches in Macedonia. Macedonia was an area north of Corinth. The Christians there were suffering. They did not have much money, but they still gave joyfully. Paul said that even though the believers were poor, they gave as much as they could to help others. Paul encouraged the believers at Corinth to give in the same way. Giving is one way we can show we love God. Paul gave an even better example. Jesus, who was rich with glory and honor in heaven, gave that up and became poor by coming to earth to help us. Jesus did this so that we, who had nothing, could become rich. Now, we have salvation and eternal life in Jesus. Paul pointed out that the Corinthian believers were not financially poor like the Macedonians. They had more than enough and could give to those who did not have enough. Then everyone would have what they needed. Paul reminded the believers that when God sent manna to the Israelites in the wilderness, everyone gathered what they needed. Some gathered much, but they did not have too much. Some gathered just a little, but they had enough. 
Paul said that how much a person gives is not as important as his attitude about giving. God loves a cheerful giver, he said. He encouraged the Corinthians to give what they decided is right. Paul reminded them that God gives us everything we need. Everything we have is a gift from God. God might give us wealth so we can share it. When we give to the church, the church uses what we give to help people in need. Then those people will thank God for the gifts they receive. Paul taught that meeting needs generously and cheerfully shows that you believe the good news about Jesus. He said, let's thank God for the most wonderful gift of all, his son, Jesus. God has been merciful and generous to us. He gave us the greatest gift, his own son. Jesus showed us what generosity looks like when he gave up his life to save us from sin. Because of Jesus, we can be merciful and generous to others. I loved today's story. Isn't it amazing that there is a church that we read about that is in Macedonia, uh, where Paul goes to, and this church is not a rich church, it is a poor church, and even out of its poverty and the things that you, they don't really have much, they gave generously to the church in Jerusalem. And so Paul encouraged the people in Corinth to remember this amazing church and how they gave themselves first to God and then to others by helping another church. They were generous, just like our God is generous and kind to us. And so after today's story, I think there's about maybe four things that we can learn about God from this and how we should ask him to help us to be like him. Firstly, we learn that God owns everything. That means there's nothing that God does not own. And everything that you have and everything that I have is only a gift from God to us. And so God wants us to use what he has given us in a way that shows people what he is like. And so, yes, he blesses us, but we don't actually own it. We are more like managers that need to take care of what God has given us in how he has told us to do that. So I pray that you remember that everything that you have has actually been given to you by God and that you would use it well and that you would be generous and kind with it like God is. The second thing we learn from today's story is that giving to others is one way we can show that we love God. Okay, so when we give, we can show that we love God. Do you know why, boys and girls? Yes, because God is generous and he gave us the most amazing gift. God gave us his one and only son. He sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to come to earth and to die for our sins when we did not deserve it. That's how amazing and generous God is. Not only did he give us everything that we have today, but most importantly, he gave us Jesus. And Jesus shows us what it is like to be generous. He didn't hesitate. He left the glory and the amazing privileges and riches that he had in heaven. And he came to earth as a person and he became poor and he lived an amazing life that we should have lived and ultimately, he died on the cross for our sins and rose again. And so through God the Father and through Jesus Christ, we get to see how generous our God is. And so because God is so generous to us in Jesus Christ, we too can be generous and kind to others in how we give. The next thing that we learn, which is the third thing, is that we are not called to give because we feel forced to do so, because somebody tells us we have to. Uh, we shouldn't give that way. That's not the right heart or attitude to have. We shouldn't also give because it is some duty, like how we are on a Sunday morning and the little piggy goes around and we feel, oh, we have to give because everybody else is giving. No, God is more interested in our hearts and he wants us to give with the right heart. And he wants us to give with the heart of thanks. In other words, when we say, God, you've given us so much.
because of Jesus, then we want to give because God has been generous to us. And so the last thing I wanted to say, which is point number four, is this, is that you don't have to have a lot to start giving. The church in Macedonia didn't have much, but yet they gave. They gave off everything that they had. So you can start somewhere, even if you have a little, to be generous and to look to others. And so at North Point Kids, there's at least two ways that you can give. Firstly, we give on a Sunday when we meet together. Uh, a little piggy goes around and you can come beforehand and give and give cheerfully with a happy heart because God has blessed you. And we use that to be able to do everything we do at North Point Kids. Or secondly, I want to encourage you. We as a whole church, we often give to those who are poor and do not have the same as us. And so we have something called Impopomo. And I want you to speak to your parents and to see how you can pray and how you can give, especially in this time when there's COVID and when it is cold, how you can give towards Impopomo. Would you pray with your parents? Would you ask them? And would you see how you can give? You can go onto our website, ask your parents to do that, get our bank details, and let us be those who give towards those who are poor and needy. And I pray that you would do that and many would be blessed and many will also hear about the good news of Jesus Christ. So God bless you and I pray that you do that. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you are such a generous God. You've given us your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray that we too would be generous and that we would give to others. Help us with that now and help us change our hearts that we would be those who give with a happy and cheerful heart because you have given us so much through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Let's do our memory verse for today. Sky, why don't you help us to do it? If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. See, the new has come. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. That's awesome. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. Remember that memory verse. And now also we're going to talk about God's plan for us, which we do every week because it's so important. And it's the gospel, which is God's plan for every one of us. And it's the gospel and God's plan in 10 words. Can we do it together? Sky, wouldn't you help us also with this? God rules. We sin. God provided. Jesus gives. And we respond. So God rules he rules over everything there's nothing that's not under his control we have sinned and we have fallen short of what god wants of us to worship him and we separated from him but god didn't leave us there god provided by sending jesus to die on the cross for our sins and for him to rise again from the dead and jesus gives us he gives us forgiveness he gives us the hope of eternal life and to come and be back to god again when we trust in him and our response should be that we would turn away from our sins and turn to Jesus and believe in Him. That is God's plan for you and that is God's plan for me. What an awesome lesson that was. And I pray that you have learned much just like us. And that you also will be generous like Jesus is generous and kind. But there's so much more you can also do in this week with your parents. And you can get all of that information to work through it with your parents. For more information, go to mpcc.org.za. Have an awesome week and we look forward to seeing you soon in person. We'll let you know when that's going to happen again. Bye.